It's part of every pilot's primary training, a forced landing without engine power. But while pilots are trained on nailing that emergency landing, what happens after you put the checklist aside? How well prepared are you to survive in the wilderness, in winter, waiting for rescue to arrive? Surviving the initial crash or forced landing in the backcountry is challenging enough. Now the downed pilot and passengers have to survive in adverse conditions while awaiting rescue. Being prepared and having a plan can make all the difference for survival. And it starts with being dressed for the environment you're flying in. In winter, make sure that you have a warm Arctic style parka, boots, warm hat and winter gloves. Ask yourself before you get in the aircraft, can I survive for a few days with what I have with me in the middle of the terrain over which I'm flying? If the answer is no, then rethink your equipment list. Right after the forced landing, the priority will be to move away from the aircraft in case of fire. Only return to the wreckage when you're absolutely sure it's safe to retrieve the survival kit and emergency supplies. The next priority is to treat any life-threatening injuries, dressing open cuts, ensuring proper breathing, stabilizing broken bones, and keeping warm to avoid shock. Beyond having a complete first aid kit, being prepared with first aid training is extremely valuable in dealing with this task. Next, ensure that others know that you need help. Were you able to transmit a Mayday or select code 7700 on your transponder before your forced landing? Is your ELT activated and is it working? Don't assume that it activated on impact. Manually turn the switch on. Is anybody aware of your whereabouts through a flight plan or flight itinerary? If you answered positively to these questions, chances are that help will soon be on its way, weather permitting. If you have a personal satellite messenger or PLB, activate it. Is your aircraft radio operational? VHF radio signals are effective only in line of sight. However, even with a handheld radio, you may be able to raise an airliner flying five miles above. It's unlikely that a mobile phone will get a signal out in a remote area, but some phones have a digital compass and can provide your GPS position, which could be useful. Now is the time to use the stop plan. Sit down. Think, don't panic. What was the last town you saw? Was there a road? When is your flight plan closing? Observe, observe your surroundings and listen. Do you hear road traffic, snowmobiles? Plan, when you're thinking clearly, you can make a plan to survive. If there's more than one able body available, divide the work between yourselves and get busy. Circumstances will dictate what the first task should be. The best course of action should be to light a fire as soon as possible. A campfire is a source of light and heat, both necessary for the well-being of the survivors. Equally as important, you should be ready to create a signal with lots of smoke should you hear an aircraft in the distance. In deteriorating weather, your priority should be to find or build a temporary shelter. In the short term, you could wrap yourself in a survival blanket or tarp. Anything that will offer some protection from the wind and precipitation will do. The goal is to stay warm and dry to prevent hypothermia. The aircraft wreckage might be useful as a wind barrier, but first check for stability and spilled fuel dangers. A fire should be built on the downwind side of the shelter. Use dead wood, like a fallen tree limb. Gather plenty of firewood before dark because you will go through a lot of it during the night. If the snow cover is thin, scrape it off to build the fire over bare ground. Otherwise, use stones or align logs on top of the snow to create a platform to build on. Never build your fire under a snow-covered tree or overhang. The heat will rise, melt the snow, and put your fire out. How successful you'll be at lighting a fire can depend on the contents of your survival kit. Storm-proof matches, lighters, magnesium blocks, and flares could all work. Your first aid kit might possibly contain items that could serve as substitute for tinder or fire starter. A small quantity of fuel from the aircraft will help in getting the fire started. Your aircraft contains a battery, which if not damaged during the landing is a source of spark and is effective in igniting dry kindling or fuel. Just make sure that your ELT has an independent power source before you disconnect the battery and use it to start a fire. The time spent finding dry kindling and firewood is well worth it. Dry deadwood provides more heat after igniting but to create lots of smoke for a fire signal, use live evergreen branches. If you're not fully confident that you could actually start a fire in a survival situation, practice fire starting techniques or take a survival course. 
If you've downed over rugged terrain, or if the weather's closed in, it could be some time before help arrives. This means you need to build a more permanent shelter. Erect it at a short distance, preferably within view of the wreckage. Remember, that's what the search party is looking for. A tarp draped over a rope tied between two trees over a bed of evergreen boughs as a ground cover will offer adequate protection for one or two people. For a group of three or four, or in the absence of a tarp, a lean-to structure built from chopped trees covered with layers of evergreen boughs will make a suitable shelter against wind and falling snow. Parts could also be stripped from the wreckage and used as building materials. Make your presence known. Smoke, lots of it, draws attention. If there's an open area nearby, such as a frozen lake, build a fire. Better yet, three fires forming a triangle as this is recognized as a distress signal. Smoke can be produced by adding evergreen boughs or leaves to the fire. Have a large supply on hand to quickly place on the fire should an aircraft be seen or heard. Engine oil, tires or other parts scavenged from the aircraft will create a thick pillar of black smoke, making it more noticeable than just a campfire alone. Ground-to-air signals, such as a V or an X or SOS, can be used by forming the letters out of branches, stones or brightly colored or contrasting material. The symbols should be at least 8 feet across. A fabric panel of brilliant fluorescent color staked to the ground is very useful to attract the attention of the searchers. They'll be looking for anything out of the ordinary and their eye will be drawn to any unnatural feature on the ground. A downed aircraft has the best chances of being spotted if portions of the wings or tail are brightly painted. Keep the aircraft clear of snow or brush. A signaling mirror can be an effective way of getting spotted during daytime in the sunshine. As a substitute, you could use a piece of metal or side window from the aircraft, foil or any other reflective object. Flares should be used only when you're quite confident that they'll be seen. During the hours of darkness, chemical glow sticks, flashlights, headlamps, strobes or even camera flashes can be used. An important task is to stay hydrated. Find some water. It's possible to survive a few days without water, but under stress, people should actually drink more water than they normally do. Two to four liters a day is recommended. Often in cold temperatures, people neglect to drink because they do not feel overheated, yet you still lose fluids through breathing and perspiration. Finding drinkable water is therefore essential for survival. Snow might be your only source of water, but resist the temptation to eat it as it will lower your core temperature. Always melt it first. If you're unsure that the water you have found is safe to drink, treat it first. If a suitable container is available, you could boil it for 10 minutes plus one minute for each 300 meters of elevation. A water filter may not work as well in freezing temperatures. Otherwise, treat it with water purification tablets. In most survival situations, since rescue can be expected reasonably quickly, food is not a top priority. A person can actually survive for a few weeks without any. But in the short term, food items that include simple sugars will help fight hypothermia by activating the metabolism. High energy bars, cereal bars, and trail mix will do. Remember that food also is important in keeping up people's spirits. Next, settle down and conserve your energy. If you end up spending the night in the wilderness, don't expect to get much sleep, if any. If you're missing and people are alerted to that fact, somebody will be looking for you. So keep your spirits up. Regulations require that any aircraft operating where rescue may be more difficult because of remoteness or inaccessibility should have survival equipment on board. The aircraft survival kit should include a means to provide first aid, building a shelter, making a fire, signaling and purifying water, and be sufficient for the survival of each person on board for a minimum of 72 hours. Smart pilots equip themselves with a personal survival kit that they carry in their pockets or in a survival vest. The survival gear is not always retrievable from the wreckage and you can find yourself in a survival situation with only what you have on your person. You certainly hope not to have to put these skills to practice in a real emergency, but being prepared is essential. Wearing proper clothing and having the appropriate gear, including a survival and first aid kit, a variety of signaling devices, including flares and smoke signals is half the battle. But having the knowledge of survival techniques is the key to surviving in adverse conditions. Take a survival course, always plan ahead, and be prepared for the worst. It could save your life and the lives of your passengers.